Macro photography is a lot of fun, and there are various ways to get really close up to objects. One of the quirkiest pieces of camera gear for macro photography is a set of bellows. They may not look too cool, in fact they look positively clunky, but you can take very cool photos. So if you're thinking of buying a set of bellows, or would like to see how bellows work, on their own with a conventional lens, or in combination with other macro gear, then this video will explain what you can expect. I'm going to test these Russian bellows against a variety of other methods for taking macro photographs to see how the results come out, to see how much closer you can get to objects, and to see how sharp the images are. The bellows here are easily adaptable to modern digital cameras. I'm using them with an M42 to Pentax K-mount adapter on my camera. This set is in very good condition. It came with the original box direct from Russia. And they're not very expensive, certainly a lot cheaper than buying a macro lens. If you decide to buy some old bellows, just make sure they're in good working condition, with all the fittings, and no tears in the material when they're fully extended. I personally had no desire to buy bellows, until that is, I started collecting projector lenses. I found that bellows are a good way of adapting projector lenses for digital cameras. They fit very well into the front, although they may need a bit more padding. It gives you flexibility to vary the focal length of the lenses, from close-up to a head portrait, but note the combination typically won't focus all the way to infinity. The photos you can take by using projector lenses can be really lovely. If you get the right lenses and you're prepared to do some post-processing, images can be sharp and colourful with great bokeh. After trying out the projector lenses, I started to experiment with using the bellows for their original purpose, for taking ultra close-up shots with M42 mount lenses. And this video is specifically about using bellows with camera lenses. I'll do another video about projector lenses later. So let's look at the conventional use of these bellows and see how well they perform against other options. If you want to take close-up macro shots, you have a variety of alternatives. You can buy a specialist macro lens, like this Macro Takuma 50 f4. It's a really good lens. Secondly, you could use extension tubes, like these ones. Thirdly, you can put a magnifier on the front of your lens. This one is a Raynox M250. That's the name of my version, but if you want to look for it on the web, it's also sold as a Raynox DCR250. There are other options, including microscopes, or buying a reversal ring and reversing the lens. It's not something I've tried, as I already have plenty of macro lenses and gear, but if you're using a reversal ring, please tell us how well it works in the comments below. It'd be interesting to hear from you. I thought it'd be helpful to do a test of each of the different macro options so you can see how close you can get to a stationary object. One of macro's great enemies is movement and the wind, so I'm staying indoors and I've chosen this bottle of wine as my macro subject. The label should be a good test for macro shots because we can focus in on one part of the text and also the closer we get, the more the fibres of the paper will start to show, another good test of macro capabilities. And of course, after the experiment is over and everything is still in focus, I can enjoy the wine in another way. Now, having carefully chosen the wine for the test, we need to choose the lens for the test. And I'm going to use this Carl Zeiss Jena Tessa 50 f2.8. They're excellent lenses you could use in focal lengths from 35mm all the way up to 100mm and beyond. I happen to use 50mm the most, and that's just my personal preference. But what's more important, for obvious reasons, is to use a lens that has good resolution. And you may ask why I've chosen this particular lens. It's not one of the more expensive M42 lenses. In fact, it's quite cheap and it's easy to find. The main reason for choosing this old lens, with its age-old Tessa optical design, is it's really good and sharp stop down. And in the film era, you could often see one of these lenses on the end of a set of bellows. So the Tessa has a great reputation, and you can see why looking at this photo of the wine bottle. I'd be happy if one of my new digital lenses took such a crisp image. And by the way, all the photos that follow have been taken with the lens stopped down to f5.6 to f8. I've done some processing on all these photos to adjust exposure and contrasts, so they're relatively consistent across all the different types of macro technique and lighting used, but I've not cropped any of the images or sharpened them. So the first macro method I'm going to show is the bellows, just with the lens. Once the lens is screwed on, and to try to get as close as possible, I'll be using the bellows fully extended. Before the test, here are some photos taken with the bellows and the Zeiss, starting with a couple of images 
of the top dial of a camera. Firstly with the bellows at a shorter extension, because you don't have to be right up close, and then fully extended. And now onto the wine label test. Fully extended, this is how close I could get to the label. And here's the result. I'll comment on the details of the images after we've seen the other macro methods. Now we'll look at extension tubes. They're a simple and cheap alternative for taking macro shots, and numerous photographers have taken loads of great macro shots using tubes and non-macro lenses. I'm using one tube here, it's 25 millimeters long. I could add more tubes, but let's see how this one does. It's easy to use extension tubes with the conventional lens, even handheld if you can't use a tripod, assuming your objects are not moving around too much. Here's how close I could get, and the result. OK, another macro method is to put a magnifying glass on the front of the lens. This magnifier is a Raynox M250. The 250 is quite a powerful magnifier, and it helps you get nice and close to your subject. But you may prefer not to be so close up to snakes or bees, for example, and there are less powerful magnifiers available. The Raynox fits most lens filter sizes, and I found it to be particularly useful as a travel accessory, because you can simply put it on a walk-around lens and take great macro shots with some gorgeous details. I'm very fond of this piece of gear, and you can use it on any lens, regardless of the lens mount, with excellent results. It really can produce very attractive 3D pop and vibrant colours. Here's the Raynox taking a photograph of the wine label. It produces roughly the same magnification as the extension tube, which surprised me because I thought the Raynox would actually magnify more. So how do these methods compare to using a specialist macro lens? Well, this macro Takuma is capable of one to one magnification, unlike some more recent macro lenses that are only one to two. It's a great lens for its age. It's a little slurred f4, but it's still a great lens, sharp with good contrasts. It's one of my favorite old lenses, and it does a great job on all kinds of macro work. With the lens fully extended, this is how close I can get to the label. And here's the shot. The results are sharp, the contrasts are good, and you can clearly see the fibers of the paper. Looking at the photos in isolation is interesting, but it's perhaps more instructive to see the photos next door to each other, so you can judge the relative magnifications of each macro approach. Remember, none of these photos have been cropped, and this is where you can see how much more magnification you get from using the bellows. The bellows with the Zeiss have done a good job. They produce sharp details really close up. It helps that the object being photographed is static and the bellows are securely stabilized, but that's how you need to use this equipment. After seeing these results, I thought it would be fun to try some different combinations of the macro methods involving the bellows, extension tubes, and the macro lens. And I started with the extension tube on the macro Takuma, and then the Raynox on front of the lens. This arrangement resulted in some slight vignetting, not a big issue, but generally I found that the extension tubes didn't add much compared to simply putting the Raynox on the front of the Takuma. So here's a photo from the Raynox macro Takuma combination, compared with the photo from using the lens on its own. No surprise, it's magnified the wine label more and without any apparent loss of detail when you zoom in. So if you wanted a really close up image with an easy to use setup, then it's definitely an option to slap a magnifier on the front of a macro lens. Then I put the bellows back on with the Zeiss and added the Raynox to the front of the Zeiss. And as you can see, it's considerably closer than the macro lens of the Raynox. Here's the image on its own. And by this point in magnification, the depth of field is so narrow, we're starting to see the impact of the curve of the wine bottle. You can stop the lens down more than f8 here, but then you can get other distortions. Either way, it's fiendishly hard to focus on the subject, and any slight movement of the camera and the lens can add blurring. So photos need to be taken on a remote shutter control or a timer. Having said this, I'm pretty happy with how the details of the paper label and the fibers have come out. 
And then I went all out for maximum magnification with the bellows and the macro tacuma. And I also switched cameras from my full frame camera to a camera with a 1.5 times crop sensor. You can see how physically close we're getting to the label. In fact, when I added the Raynox to the macro tacuma as well on front of the bellows, the whole setup was just too close. It was almost touching the label and it became too hard to get the lighting right and the photos lost their edge. The results from this last combination, combining the bellows with the macro lens, are impressive in terms of how noticeably more magnified they are than other methods. And I should add that the exposure differences you see on this slide are caused with how I dealt with post-processing. As a rule of thumb, the closer the lens got to the wine label, the more lighting support the label needed to avoid shadows, etc. The label might be impressively magnified, but the details are not so crisp. And by this stage, I was really struggling with getting the fibers of the label in focus. This image is the best of a number of shots I attempted, and I'm less happy with it than some of the other macro shots taken with other methods. And that's one of the most important conclusions about using different macro methods. The trade-off between how close you can get, and how sharp the image is, and how good the resolution is. Because if you have an image that is sharp with great resolution, but it's a bit further away, then you can crop it to get closer in, and that'll work very well, better than a close-up photo with less sharpness. The bellows can get you close up to an object, but it may not be so sharp, and quite frankly, there's a lot of distance for light to travel down that extended tube. I've got an example here, where I've cropped a photo from the macro lens on the left, and compared it with the uncropped version using the bellows and the macro lens on the right. The big caveat to cropping versus magnifying, of course, is that you'll be reducing the size of your files, which in turn can lead to less sharpness and less micro contrast. So this is the actual size of the cropped image compared to the image taken with the bellows. And as you can see, the cropped image is quite a lot smaller. Another critical point about the bellows, and this will be a deal breaker for many, is that they're not at all convenient to walk around with. The other methods of taking macro shots all work well as walkarounds, but not really the bellows. You have to be more than a little quirky to walk outside with your bellows set up and take them to the local park for a longer walk in search of macro opportunities, although that's precisely what I do, and you do get some strange looks. I think only photo sniper lenses create more of a stir, especially if you have this James Bond style attitude. Related to the fact that the bellows, especially when fully extended, are very clunky to carry around, is the difficulty of holding the bellows steady and nailing the focus. You really need to have the bellows on a sturdy tripod. That's not a problem, as there's a plate at the base of the bellows where you can screw in a tripod head. However, even with the sturdy tripod, the length of the bellows makes it a real challenge to focus accurately on a close-up subject. Having said that, if you're prepared to spend a little time setting up the whole bellows arrangements carefully, then it works very effectively, as we've seen, even with older lenses. In conclusion, after looking at the close-up advantages of the bellows versus other ways of taking macro shots, I do feel that bellows are worth a serious consideration. They'll get you closer to your objects and other methods, if that's what you want to do. And if you're focusing on static objects and you can secure the bellows to a tripod or a table, the results are excellent. And another plus is that you can use the bellows with projector lenses with great results, not just for close-up macro shots. I personally don't use my bellows all the time, but when I do, it's an interesting and rewarding experience. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to subscribe, please do, and I'll be producing some more videos. And any comments or suggestions below are most welcome.